And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone. I just wanted to say thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us this morning. And before I introduce David, I just wanna give you a little background as to why we're here today. And here at Allied, we definitely want to be more than a title provider. We really want to offer various resources uh, for our partners, providing valuable information that all of you can use to generate more income for yourselves and also increase your clients' engagement. So with David, I had the pleasure of working with him on a recent VA home loan transaction in the D.C. area. David is a senior vice president at the Federal Savings Bank, where he does specialize in VA home loans. He is a national instructor for the Military Relocation Professional Certi Certification, which is a course that's offered by the National Association of Realtors. And he's also a real estate instructor and a writer on housing for various military organizations. So I'm gonna be here today just to answer any of your questions and help facilitate today's seminar. And with that, David, you can go ahead and get started. Thank you, Wendy, for the warm introduction and welcome everybody. And uh, thank you for attending. Uh, one thing I forgot to leave out, I am also currently, so the reason why I do a lot of military um, housing education uh, and work in the real estate community is I'm also serving in the military currently. Uh, I'm in the National Guard. So that's one of the reasons why I'm overseas right now. So thank you everyone for coming out. So today we're gonna to be talking about primarily how to make a VA home loan competitive and to win more deals, right? Because that's what everybody wants. Just like one of the comments that came on was how to overcome objections from listing agents and sellers. And that's really understanding the product itself, right? We're gonna to touch base on that. And then we're gonna go through just some of the main issues I see working with folks across the country. Uh, one of the uh, biggest issues that comes about when with VA home loans and VA deals is the misinformation that's out there, right? There's a lot of stuff. You could talk to two different lenders. You could talk to a managing broker. You could talk to a different realtor. You can um, look research stuff online. You're going to see different information that's out there. And what we're going to be talking about today isn't necessarily like, hey, this is what David does at the bank. This is what the VA actually allows for people to do. I'm going to give you guys some tools on how to overcome objections. I'm going to give you best practices for how to close these loans fast because I hear a lot of, hey, this is going to take forever to close or something can't be done or there's like appraisal issues. So we're going to touch base on all of that. Now, one of, uh, while we go into this, you know, let me know if, what questions you have while we go through this. I know that Sherry asked about the overcoming listing agents and sellers objections, which we're going to cover uh, in this, but then I'll also give you guys more tools to be able to either articulate uh, how the offer is being made and just various little tips and tricks that will help deal come together. The agenda is going to go through just understanding the common uh, VA home loan myths from the veteran side. We're going to talk about why veterans utilize the VA home loan. We're going to compare it to different products that are out there, right? Because people are always like, well, why don't you go conventional? Why don't you go FHA, which we don't hear that much, but some veterans get steered into FHA loans versus VA loans. And then we're going to go over the common issues. And then we're going to talk about how lenders are actually hurting your clients with the amount of fees they charge them. So how to be an advocate for your clients as well. So some of the common myths that uh, veterans typically don't know, or these are things that come up, is how many times a veteran can use the VA home loan itself. So this benefit is actually a life benefit that they can use unlimited times. So for some reason, there's some stick, there's something out there that says that you can only have one, you can only use it once. We typically see that uh, across the entire spectrum, right? So people that are freshly minted in the military to folks that have served during Vietnam and, and before. How many VA home loans can they have at the same time? Most people will tell you that it's one, but the fact is you can have unlimited VA home loans at the same time. Now, what happens is that you exhaust your entitlement at some point but this isn't a math class because that in itself, I would have to like break it down. So we'll keep it pretty general. 
but you can uh, also buy two properties with no money down, right? So it's all based on the entitlement. So there's a lot of misconfusion on how that works, but it's definitely possible to do. How long do the, does a veteran have to live in a home before they could rent it? Uh, a lot of people will tell you that it's one year. But the fact of the matter is that it could be at any time. And the reason how that works is that we have clients that buy homes and no joke, the following week, they get deployed for a year somewhere. Like they just bought a house, right? So you can definitely um, do that. And the other cool thing is, it's that if a veteran's deployed overseas and their family is back home, and let's say they're in Virginia, just because the veteran themselves that's on the mortgage isn't going to live in the property, their spouse can occupy the property as a primary residence, even though they're overseas. So that's something that's cool that we've been doing over the last couple of years, just because folks are stationed throughout the world. Who offers VA home loans? It's lenders and banks that offer them. There's a lot of miscon. Uh, confusion around veterans because I'll talk to veterans and be like, oh yeah, the VA approved me for this. And then I'll ask them who they're working with and they'll give me a lender's name that kind of sounds like it's the VA. So the VA only does, well, they do do two types of loans, which is one on sovereign land, like for, um, for Indian, like for American Indian loans. And then the other portion is going to be for any type of um, disability disability loans they give out right so if a veteran wants to modify their home to be able to put in a stairs or not stairs but to put in like a ramp modify the bathroom modify the kitchen for their needs they're able to do that can you buy an income property with the va home loan this one is popular amongst places where they have multi-units now i'm not sure do you guys have a lot of like multi-dwelling properties for sale like a two unit three or four unit property up by you guys I don't know if uh, you guys come across them. If you guys want to drop that in the chat, so at least I can see if, if you guys do run across those. Or Wendy, have you guys uh, provided title on those before? On multifamily? On VA? Yeah. Um, or just multifamily I, in general? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely in um, parts of DC, like Northeast, there's more multifamily and Maryland surrounding areas. Okay, that's awesome. So yeah, so a veteran can purchase three, a two unit, three or four unit property and basically pay no mortgage payment. So it's, it's, it's a pretty nice deal. And then using a VA loan for a construction loan. The answer is yes, you can do it with 100% financing. So it's pretty nifty. It's the only product out there that lets you do 100% financing. And there's no limit, which we'll go over in a little bit. So what are some of the big benefits for veterans to actually use the VA home loan, right? So one is interest rates are lower than conventional loans. Uh, you have to be careful just because of the fees that are associated with it, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Down payment, as long as they have their full entitlement, they don't have to put a down payment, not a penny down. They still have to pay closing costs. A big advantage for veterans to have no down payment is it helps them close the gap between the appraised value and purchase price in the event they're in a bidding war. So a lot of times a big objection comes up. They'll say, well, the veteran has no money because they're putting 100%, they're getting 100% financing. Well, the thing is, is that they're qualified for a product, right? Veterans have the choice to put a down payment and some do. Just with money being so cheap, it, it doesn't make sense for them necessarily to be able to put that towards their property because they're getting a, such a low interest rate. But a big, but again, a big factor of this is either depending on where you are, people will verify assets. If they, people have assets, they submit that with the offer. So again, it just depends on where you're at. But this is a great tool to be able to leverage that, right? Closing the gap just because properties, you know, we've seen them go 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000, 200,000 over asking price. Now we've been fortunate, majority of the appraisals have appraised that value, but just sometimes it just goes a little too high and there's a gap. They don't pay private mortgage insurance, even with 100% financing. Uh, the qualifying standards are looser, so they're able to do lower credit scores and still have really high, uh, really great interest rates. 
The reason why they have looser credit standards is as people get deployed, life happens and the VA is very flexible on that. Credit score, same thing. The VA doesn't have a credit score, but nobody in their right mind would lend without having some type of minimum credit score. So most lenders are going to have an overlay to the VA and they'll say, well, we want to get a 580, 600, 640, whatever the case may be. And typically to go over a million dollars, you need a 700 or higher credit score. If they have a service related disability, which I'll tell you a lot of people, you wouldn't even be able to tell they have a 10% or 100% disability rating. They're just, it's just based how the VA rates it. But if they have a disability rating, there's two big things that happen. <clears throat> they pay no VA funding fee. So it's like a fee the VA charges to use the VA home loan. But the bigger one is real estate taxes. So in Virginia, if they buy up to a million dollar home, I believe it's two acres or less, and they have a 100% disability rating that's permanent and total, they don't pay a penny in property taxes. And that goes into effect the following month after buying a home. So that could be a huge win and a game changer for folks that don't even know this is an option. Now, if somebody's still in the service, right, they might not necessarily have a disability rating unless they're, uh, they were a veteran, got out of the service, got a disability rating, and then they join, like, let's say, the National Guard, like what I'm doing, or the Reserve. Then it'd be something that could happen. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that there is uh, no limit on a VA loan as long as they qualify. So if they want to buy a $2 million place, two and a half million and a half million dollar place, they could easily do so. And a lot of veterans take advantage of that. But to like what Sherry was saying is that how do you overcome that? Veterans can switch conventional loans to VA home loan and vice versa. Where that comes into play is when people own properties in other states or they've taken VA home loans and turned them into investment properties, and then they, let's say they come to Virginia and they're like, well, we need more purchasing power. Well, that's an easy solution. They're able to refinance out of a VA loan into an investment property investment loan, and then they're able to free up their benefits to purchase a property. If somebody's on active duty and they receive the Purple Heart, they also get the VA funding fee waived. Any questions so far? I don't think I saw any in the chat. No, we're good. Okay. So I'll give you guys just a side by side comparison. Take a look at, as you'll see, I did an 850 purchase price across the board conventional FHA and VA. I'm also using the uh, the newer loan limit increase for 2022. If you look, let me see if I get my little star thing on. Give me one second. All right. So as you guys see across the board, the conventional FHA VA, all the same purchase price, down payment, minimum requirements by 5% conventional, three and a half uh, FHA and zero with a VA home loan. But if you look down here at the mortgage payment, right? So I base this on a 700 credit score. You'll see that the interest rate at, as of today was 3.375. And the VA home loan was definitely significantly lower. Uh, and one just correction on this. I just have to update the APR on this. Just my, That's my mistake when I did this to get that updated. So I'll get that updated before we send out the PowerPoint. So you'll see that the rate is significantly lower, one. The, when you look at the private mortgage insurance, you'll see that $242 for conventional, $591 for an FHA. So if you look at the total payment, so a veteran putting no money down is still going to have a $262 cheaper payment than a conventional loan and $449 cheaper than a FHA loan. So that definitely helps people be able to qualify for more and also leverage cash. This is why someone putting you no know, someone have to put down another probably 10 percent just to match what the va has and like i mentioned earlier why not give themselves a buffer in the event an appraisal comes in short for whatever reason you're able to make up for that now we're going to go into the meat and potatoes and some solutions right because the problem is is that when people call you with a problem and they don't have a solution it's it's not a good thing right so closing times 
what do you guys think? Well, what do you guys hear the average time is? Or what's your experience with the time frame that VA home loans close in? Do you guys want to drop that in the chat or you can unmute yourselves? 45 days. Okay. And that's about, uh, that is about what the average time frame is, right? We see 45 to 60 days, which doesn't make loans competitive. So how do you go around that? So I'll give you an example. Like when uh, Wendy and I close our deal, like our closings are about 25 days on VA purchases. If not, maybe a little bit less, just depending on the area. So I'm going to walk you guys through how that's completed. Because how do you become, again, competitive to win deals if it's taking 45 to 60 days and other people are coming in with much shorter time frames? The key, there's two parts to this. Your clients, when they get pre-approved, they need to submit all their loan documents to the lender. The problem you face, well, one, a lot of folks use some of the big banks like uh, USA, Veterans United, maybe Federal. They, they're just a call center, right? So it just they just take in applications. They take all the information verbally. Someone may upload the documents, but it's not reviewed just because I see this all the time. So making sure that the actual documentation is thoroughly reviewed. And also some lenders offer, like we offer it, is where a client can be actually underwritten before making an offer on the property. So when they make an offer, it's actually a mortgage commitment that's being issued with the offer. So it's definitely, a, it makes life a lot easier, especially when you're out explaining this on the sell side because the client is already completed and underwritten. A big thing, too, that we've had huge success with is having the lender call the listing agent before an offer is made or when the offer is made, basically CCing them on the line. The big thing right now is communication, right? So any relationship in general, right, requires communication. Bad communication, there's going to be some arguments. <laughs> so communicating with the lender and having them do this. Now, the crazy thing is, is that I will get pushback from like new agents that I meet just because I do a lot of seminars for the veteran community. So I get to get a lot of leads just from uh, like the consumer side. And then we just, they might have their own realtors that they pick. And then when we talk to them, then go through a game plan of, hey, this is how we're going to execute a successful win and actually get a contract is by just doing these separate steps. And it just gets lost where they won't see me any emails until like a couple of weeks in. And then they, they start doing it because I'm like, why aren't you seeing me on the emails? And, and I'll tell you guys, if you guys have lenders that already do that, that's awesome, right? That's what they want to communicate with you to at least be able to know what the client's situation is, especially when it's super tight uh, timeline you guys are working on. We'll call them within just minutes of making an offer or just do a prep call like, you know, like, hey, John, it's, it's David at the Federal Savings Bank. Just want to give you a heads up. A client of mine is making an offer on your property. And just kind of walk them through like, hey, is there anything that we need to be aware of? Or like, hey, this is our process. This is what's going to happen. Just want to make sure that, you know, if you guys have any questions listing or the buyers or the sellers have any questions, you know, definitely ask us and we'll walk you through that. It opens up the channels. And this is really more designed too from both ends, right? Buyers, agents, sellers, agents, because you need to really understand who they're working with. Is this going to close? So just getting as much information as humanly possible. And also communication with people, like what their availability is. Uh, a big thing when it comes to how you can close fast is ordering the appraisal <clears throat> title, which Wendy, thank you. Uh, homeowners insurance, condo docs, if it's a condo, which I'm going to cover condos. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, have a lot of misunderstanding about condo. And disclosing the loan application within 24 hours. That is the key to having a fast closing. And, it, and that's why that 25-day thing can be slimmed down. So typically, we'll get everybody up and running, especially with the pre-approval and getting all the condo docs and getting everything ordered within 24 hours. And then that way, there, you don't have that lag to get that completed. The typical turn time from once a contract comes in to being underwritten is really four to five days. It's, it's pretty straightforward. That's, again, how you have to really time these things because you have the weekends that are factored into that. And so how do you 
typically you're just waiting for the appraisal, you know, which could take about 10 days to get back. That's why it's ordered right away. You said, sorry, now, 10, 10 weeks, 10 days. 10 days, right? 10 days. 10 10 days. days. Okay. Got it. Yeah, the 10 days, 10 days, 10 days. Uh, when it comes to uh, condos, uh, they all require VA condo approval. But I'll tell you this. Earlier this year, they accepted condo waivers on all condominiums in the country. What that means is that if a condo is denied financing or denied VA approval, the veteran can still sign a waiver and purchase in that property. Literally just one document, they sign off on it and it's done. The VA is really good about getting condos uh, approved and denied. They're pretty efficient at it. It typically takes about a week or less. We've seen them like in a couple of days. The fastest one was 24 hours. I don't know if they just had extra man hours. They weren't that busy. It was like in a December. So they did it really quick, but typically it's about a week to find out if it's denied or not. And then if it's denied, it takes about three to four business days from the time it's denied to get it an, an exception. So what I tell people that, and we do a lot of business with condos, it's, it's a hidden gem that people just don't understand. And then probably to your, some of the objections that come up on the listing side is they might say, well, hey, this is not VA approved. My lender takes, says it takes 60 days. There's too many rentals in the building. It's like 70% rented out. They don't have enough reserves. Well, the beauty is the VA doesn't care about any of that. And most people think they do. They, there's like a, People think there's a 50% cap on rentals. There is, there is no cap. There's only two things that deny a condo. One, being the right of first refusal. And two, leasing restrictions of any kind, minus no short-term rentals, minimum one-year lease. But if a building has it, it doesn't make a difference. We just get it denied. And what makes it also unique on the VA home loan side, unlike a FHA loan, is we can order an appraisal without a building being VA approved. So you can still close them super fast. Typically, if the building's not VA approved, we'll ask for a 30-day closing just because the association may be delayed on getting us documents. And the same thing goes when, since I do a lot of these, I specialize in this, when I work with the clients and the agents, we just have them CC, give them a call and walk them through that. So, it's, but again, it's, it's pretty easy to do. And with the waivers, Literally any condo. So when you go out and look at properties with a veteran that's looking at condos, you can look online. It can be denied, and it doesn't make a difference. We'll just request the waiver for them to be able to do it. Now, the one thing that um, probably the only, I would think, the only thing that would come up is if the veteran doesn't agree with the restrictions. But so far to date, we've been at 100% success rate. With, but we go over that stuff with the veteran before. So if you send condo docs, like rules, decks and bylaws, rules and regulations, then we'll look at it and let you know, like, hey, this will be denied. And this is why. And go over that with the client. So then that way, we're not running into any issues. Ah, the favorite one, appraisal issues with and misconceptions. So value, right? So what we normally do on an off, when, when we're under contract, is we, I'll reach out to the seller's agent and just walk him through this process. You can provide all the comps to the appraiser and basically not do their job, but you can get all the information with the, uh, with the listings you want them to compare them to. And if the, if the appraiser isn't from your area or if you don't like them for some reason and then you're the listing agent, you can call the lender and request a new appraiser. So I'm gonna say it one more time. If you're a listing agent and you don't, you don't have a good feeling about the appraiser, you can call the lender and have them contact the VA to reassign or to assign a new appraiser to the property. But typically they're really easy to work with. You normally just email them they're, before they come out. They'll you email them, hey, these are all the comps that I have. This is all the work that's been done to the property. Whatever justification you want to use, I would say. Uh, I was actually looking at the numbers earlier. Out of the sixteen hundred or so plus VA loans that I've done over the last couple of years, we've only had five appraisal issues. Uh, well, we had a little bit more, but we were able to rebottle it. So it was actually pretty easy. And I'll go through that. But we have five of them. So it's not as big as you think. 
there is probably an issue which we'll touch based on with appraisers that most people think about. The another big advantage with the VA home loan is I don't know if you guys ever heard of Tidewater before. So unlike an FHA or conventional loan, if the appraisal is going to come in low, you as the agent, both buyer and seller, will be notified that the appraiser is having an issue getting the appraised value and for you to submit closed comps in the area. So it's the only product that lets you do that. So that they'll issue what's called Tidewater. So just kind of that. If the appraisal comes back and it still doesn't meet what you guys want to do, you have two layers that you can go through to rebuttal an appraisal. One is the regional loan center. So you just, you just put the packet together. They just, it's a simple process. They have a document online. You just pick the three best comps that you want to submit. Submit that to the VA Regional Loan Center, to their construction and evaluation team. And then they'll review it and say like, hey, this is good or it's not good. What's Appraisals. The, what's the time ahead. frame on that? If you submit a rebuttal, a week. Long? A week. It'll be a week. But one important thing to note with that is... An appraisal is attached to a borrower, not a property. So if you have another veteran that comes in, they're not using the same appraisal. That's typical of an FHA loan. Okay. Um, so uh, somebody else uh, asked the question about uh, uh, Sherry had an experience where she submitted extra comps. The appraiser lied because the appraisal was submitted before she asked for comps. So typically, uh, Sherry, stuff like that depends on your lender because they'll get notification that this that the issue in Tidewater, and if they don't get back to you fast enough, then they're the the dates are on the appraisal, right? And another very important thing is sometimes we'll strategically delay an appraisal. And what I mean by that, the appraisal, the comps that they use are based on the close, are based on the inspection date. Okay. So if you have a property that's similar, that's closing for 50,000 more, but it's closing like in five days from now, we'll strategically hold off on doing that appraisal by an extra day or two. So then we can use that closed comp part of the appraisal process. If the appraiser goes out to the property today and the comp that you want to use doesn't close for two days, you cannot use that comp anymore. That's why knowing the area and like just knowing like what's happening in the area, obviously you guys know what, what it, what's going on, but then you're going to be able to learn. You, you'll know like, hey, let's hold off on the appraisal. appraisal. And the thing is, is that uh, the, a lot of the folks we work with, they just have honest conversations. Like, hey, this won't appraise. Or the buyers know this won't appraise. They're bringing money into the, to, to the table. That's pretty common. But if you guys talk and say, hey, let's wait for the additional comp to close so we can get the appraisal done, that's too easy. And we can get a lot of this done, uh, the mortgage and everything done ahead of time. So basically, we're just waiting on the appraisal to come through. So there's a lot of options uh, with that. But if you go to the regional loan center, you still think, hey, this didn't work. You can go up to the national loan center and they'll be able to answer any questions. And they're pretty, and you can also call them, right? So anybody can call the VA. You just call the regional loan center for the state that you're in. You ask for the construction and evaluation team and you can talk to them directly. Just because not every lender communicates with them directly. We do just, or I do at least, just because we're always in a time frame. This is my living. We want to close deals. I mean, plus, like everyone, we only work on referrals, so we have to get stuff done. This one is probably a big sore for a lot of people, and it's probably a sore of a lot of conversations, right? Property not meeting VA standards. What I mean by that is that there might be repairs that need to happen to a property, but that's super easy. Because I talked to also, because, because I teach classes, this issue comes up with veterans because they've lost homes because the sellers didn't agree to, to repairs on the property. And I'm sure if you've done VA home loan transactions, 
that's something that's come up before. It's an easy solution. They just sign off on doing an escrow holdback from the buyer for necessary repairs that need to be completed. Also, you can ask for waivers from the VA. So we did a recent, uh, this is two months ago. We did a multi-unit, four-unit purchase transaction in Chicago, in Lincoln Park. This was a million three property. They had about $7,000 worth of repairs. Now, these were legitimate repairs. Like, the building was much older. And then they didn't need it. And not everyone, not every deal has that FYI. Normally, it's like $500. This is peeling paint. But this property just had some issues with, with it that were both noted on the inspection, on the home inspection, and the appraisal that needed to be fixed. Out of that, we were able to get half of them removed by the VA. So they just signed off on them. Like, yeah, the veteran doesn't need to do that. And the remainder amount, we just had the veteran put the money into an escrow account because they were going to do the repairs themselves anyways, right? So all you do is get a contractor bid for the repairs, and we just hold one and a half times in an escrow account, and they can still close without any issues. So you can defer that. So the sellers don't have to pay for that. And a lot of people don't know that. Uh, this also includes, but not limited to, a if there's a barn on the property or a shed or a garage and it's completely dilapidated, you can ask the appraiser not to count the value of that shed, barn, or appraisal into the value of the property. Hence, it not be that, hence, it would not be a requirement to be fixed anymore. Most folks don't know that. So we, I, like I was talking with a buddy of mine, uh, and he's like, yeah, I tried to purchase it. This is a recent buddy. He was trying to buy it a while ago. And he's like, yeah, I tried to buy a house, but it had a barn on there. They told me I had to tear it down. And that's not the case. You just get, you just ask the appraiser to omit that. We had one where the garage was completely falling apart, but we had a perfect inspection just because we noted that, hey, don't count the garage as part of the appraised value so you're able to do that. Again, doing deferred maintenance, that's pretty easy as well. Let me know if you guys have any questions on that. Sometimes, or a lot, sometimes you have uh, clients that come to you already pre-approved with a different lender. And I can't tell you how many times People are like, oh, yeah, we know VA home loans. They don't. A lot of times they don't. They might do one-offs here and there. But really just asking the hard questions of just understanding how many VA home loans someone has completed. Average turn time, communication, availability. I think that's huge, right? We, we live in a world where it's, 20, it's not 24-7, but it's like 16 hours a day. You're waking up in the morning, you're doing showings, you're doing evening showings, you're working weekends, making sure you can communicate with someone. Just making sure that all the documents have been submitted and reviewed. And understanding, too, what the max payment someone qualifies for. We've had... So part of what I do with, with stuff like this is you guys have my contact info. You can reach out to me anytime. So if you have a deal with another lender, I don't care. I just want to help folks out. Normally, it takes about a couple minutes, and we have a solution on how to fix something. right? It could be in any spectrum of the transaction I'll be able to help you guys out with. But we have flipped a lot of deals from other lenders. Uh, I get flipped a lot of deals because the clients get denied or there's some kind of something weird going on and we have to fix it, right? So it's, it's almost to the point where the lender's saying like, we were not going to do this because you can't do that. And we're looking at it like, oh, this is an easy solve. This is how we're going to do it. So just keep that in mind. But it's really understanding that the clients are really qualified for the property that they're purchasing. So you're not running into any issues. If a veteran has a 100% disability rating that's permanent in total in Virginia on a million dollar or less property and two acres, you, we have the ability to waive their tax requirement for escrows on a VA home loan so they can qualify for more. So it also makes folks competitive because on a thousand dollar tax payment, that's about $250,000 in purchasing power. And really wants the appraisal order. Those are the important things that you need to be aware of. And then also just having the lender being CC'd uh, so they can contact the seller's agent. A lot of times, uh, you, your call centers just won't do that. Some of the property types and the restrictions, single family homes, 
We talked about that common issues, feeling pain. That's normally a quick fix, but again, you can just do a deferment. That's very easy. Veteran just signs off on that. Um, omitting exterior buildings and value. We talked about that. Condos, we touched base on that. They do require a special VA approval. Again, they can be denied or approved or not approved at all. And we can get that process completed for them, which again, opens up the pool of properties you can buy. And once you do a couple of them, you get really proficient at being able to pitch that to the listing agents or if you're a listing agent, right? So I also get a lot of business from listing agents just because veterans will apply for their properties and they'll know like, hey, this isn't VA approved and their lenders don't do that, right? So, so a lot of the big banks that veterans are used to working with will not work with an association to get it VA approved. It's just either VA approved or not. If it's denied, they won't do anything. Right. They don't they don't know the process. So you can always reach out to me for that as well. And they can buy two to four unit properties. Big change this year is they're actually able to use rental income to offset mortgage payment as long as they have six months reserves, which includes like a retirement account. They just have to hire a property management company. Again, no limit. We have folks that buy a million and a half, two and a half million dollar places all the time. All properties are going to require a termite inspection, which the veteran can't pay for. It changes based on where you're at. It doesn't apply to all areas. Uh, if they're in rural areas, because we will do like, you know, outside uh, the area of like the main, like DC, Maryland, Virginia, like outside the main areas will be in rural areas where they need a well and septic. So just make sure that you have that. That is something that the veteran does pay for. Uh, the appraisal does have to meet the VA standards, like we talked about. It's very different than the home inspection. People will ask me, do you want me to send you the home inspection? I said, no, please do not. We, we don't want to take a look at it. VA doesn't require it, right? That's just, that's just asking for trouble. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, lenders and lender fees. If you guys ever been on a VA transaction, just depending on, just depending on when, just like well, who the, the, bank was or the brokerage, uh, they charge an origination fee, right? So typically it's 1% is the standard. And how does that affect you? That's just extra closing costs. So on a $500,000 deal, that's just an additional $5,000. But as you imagine, that fee just stress drastically goes up. And veterans don't know that, right? They just don't know how to look at the stuff. And they confuse or nobody goes through it with them. I get a lot of that as well. Uh, discount points, typically advertised interest rates will include a 1% discount point, which again, in this case, is a pretty significant amount of money. So out the gate, without in including the fact that you're paying about 2.5%, 3% in closing costs in the uh, Virginia area, your closing costs go 4 to 5% easily, which is insane because that's overpriced. Uh, this is where you find it. It's on the second page of the loan estimate. So if you guys ever, depending on how involved you are with your client's finances, sometimes they'll show you this, or you can just ask them to take a look at it just to make sure that they're not getting screwed on anything. Uh, closing costs. So again, they typically 2 to 3%, which is 3% in Virginia. But with most VA transactions, it's higher. Now, I don't know if you guys seen a lot of closing cost credits. We, sorry. We've seen them. It just depends on how you structure the deal. Typically, if we know that the property can appraise for more, we'll just increase the purchase price by a little bit and just factor in getting a tax, getting a credit for that amount. So if you increase the purchase price by six thousand, you ask for a six thousand dollar credit. Now, it depends on where you are. Again, some people are still doing closing costs. In some areas, they're just not. And if you have a veteran that's selling and a veteran that's buying, they might be able to offer it to them, right? So it just really depends. There's no limit on how much a seller could pay in closing costs. It all is based on what the actual closing costs are. So if they're 5%, they can get 5%. If there's money left over from the seller credits that's given, a buyer can use that to actually offset paying down a credit card or a car payment. So I had the pleasure of paying someone's car off last year. It was the first time we, that was like, He's like, he's like, wait, what? At closing, he's like, you're paying off my car? And like, yeah, he had uh, 11 months left on it, but we had enough money left over where we were actually able to do that. So it's the only loan product that lets you do that. So it's pretty nifty. Um, 
Let me know what questions you guys have on this. Here's all our contact info. You guys can unmute yourselves as well. Do you guys have anything for us? Just curious about the paying off the debts. Um, mm -hmm. Are these debts that affect their eligibility for the loan or are these just general debts? Ah, good question. So it can be both. Okay. So it can, we can actually use the money to qualify someone for the purchase of a property, but we can also just pay off stuff just that they have, right? All they do is submit a statement to us and we just, we just pay it off at closing. Um, so uh, we have a question or what are some of the few things that cause a denial for the applicant? So the applicant being just a veteran themselves, nothing to do with the property, right? The biggest one is going to be, they were pre-approved incorrectly. I see it all the time. We'll typically talk with someone for a couple minutes because if they got denied by somebody else, We'll talk to them and they'll be like, they'll say something key about employment, assets, or some kind of job transition. And be like, well, you, you can't do that. That's just not possible to do. So a majority of it is purely people getting uh, pre-approved incorrectly for the mortgage and not all the documents being reviewed. Another big one, which is ironic, but this happens, is that veterans are not eligible for the VA home loan benefits. So in order for a military member to qualify for a VA home loan, if they're active duty, they need minimum of six months of the service to use their VA home loan. If they're a National Guard or reservist, they need six years to be in the service. Now, the one caveat to that is that they need to be on active duty orders, so Title 10 is what it's called, a minimum of 90 consecutive days. So that if, this, if they have a deployment under their belt, outside of training, training doesn't count. If they have a deployment under their belt that's been 90 days or more, then they're good to qualify. A big change this year as of April 15th, because we just did one of these, is that if a veteran was put on Title 32 orders, that means if you're in the National Guard, like I'm in the National Guard, I get activated to state duty. That's Title 32 orders. Well, that never counted because it was based on the state. So with the recent COVID, uh, and then like in DC, they had uh, they need they needed people to be in DC as well at some point this year. So those folks that went on Title Thirty Two orders for ninety days or more for very specific events, they also qualified for VA home loans. But I I had a perfect example of that three months ago. Veteran came or two months ago. The veteran came to us or they got denied by their lender. They're like, this is impossible. You guys have to switch to a conventional loan. We took a look at it. So this is easy. So this is how we're going to do it. I know I say this is easy a lot just because we do this. We have a lot of experience with it. So it makes it easy because we just have the resources and the knowledge to comprise it, to pull it together. So we were able to reach out to their command, get the right verbiage that they needed. We submitted that to the VA. Within a couple of days, we had their certificate of eligibility. And they and the other lenders swore up and down that it was impossible. So I hope that answers that question. But yeah, it's typically, again, just misqualification of a borrower. I don't think I've had, um, that's why it's also have that, yeah, pre the underwritten pre-approval. That's why also that makes it super easy to do. It saves a lot of time and headache. And plus it makes the offers look stronger. So, any other questions that are out there? This is free, by the way, guys. You don't have to pay. When are you muted? I <laughs> just unmuted myself. Uh, just saying, like Cheris is saying, yes, that makes a lot of sense. It's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have a question Can you combine the grants for police, et cetera? So, you can layer grants with VA home loans. That is definitely possible. So you can do it. Now, when you do these types of programs, there's different types. There's DPA, which is down payment assistance programs. And then the other type is where they give you money, right? That they say, hey, here's a grant, right? So a grant is easy. All you have to do is provide all the paperwork for the grant and a grant, we do, we do grants all the time. 
If you do a down payment assistance program, that's a whole different beast. And then all the stuff that we talked about with timelines and everything, that gets thrown out the window. So keep that in mind because a lot of times with down payment assistance programs, they're actually underwritten by the state. And if you ever had to do anything with the state, you'll know that it takes a long time. Now, I'm sure there's some agencies out there that are really efficient at it. I just haven't, I just haven't worked with them. But as far as grants go, it's we've worked with some great grant folks. So you can definitely use them. I don't know about combining multiple grants because typically the company that's <clears throat> giving you the grant, they might be on some position in the transaction as far as title. They might be on the title policy. They give you a zero loan. But if you sell the house within a certain period, they typically will charge you a fee for that. And down payment assistance programs, same thing. They one, they charge only higher interest rates because they have to make up the difference. So, but yeah, it's, it takes take too long. Yeah, uh, I don't think it takes ninety to one hundred and twenty days to do the award. I think it more along, along the lines of sixty days. But again, that makes it super tough, and they can run out of money at any point. So it's kind of it's kind of horrible if you pre. Because we used to do them back in the day, we don't we don't touch those anymore just because of the the issues that come up. Like clients are you going in to lock the rate? Everything's based on this down payment assistance program, and the money's gone. So, so yeah. What else do you guys have? Hopefully, the talking about the. Because what's a big objection that you guys see when actually, you know, from the listing side, when people are like, oh, this loan, this B loan, we don't want to take it because blank. I know that you guys mentioned a little bit earlier, but what are some of the big things you guys come across that people tell you that they don't want to work with B loans for what reason? I'd say for myself, like in my past experience, it would be the appraisal. And the fear of having to do the repairs was one of the objections. Okay. Sherry's the same thing, always the appraisal. Yeah. So you guys have that. So the two, what we talked about. So just always remember the appraisers, the appraisals are typically done like any other loan product. And the cool thing is the VA publishes how they do their appraisals in the in the VA handbook, it's public information. It's not that much to read. So keep that in mind. That's one. Two is the fact that if the listing agent gets a call and she talks to the appraiser and the appraiser doesn't know the area, she can ask the she can hold off on scheduling the appraisal, call the lender and have them reissue a new appraiser. And just give them a reason like, hey, this guy doesn't know the, or this person doesn't know the area. I want to have somebody assigned. Two, uh, three, they can also provide all the comps they want to be able to use. And then the third thing is if there are repairs, they don't have to do them with a waiver. So, but, okay, so uh, I, I should also mention something. That is something that uh, every lender does. So just keep that in mind. We do them for we do them one hundred percent. We do them all the time, uh, and then get waivers, and then also doing escrow holdbacks. So the client has to have the money, right? They they have to have money to be able to put in an escrow account. But again, you just get two one bit or two bit out there. We normally ask for two just so we can see what just to make sure that it's not going to be crazy off. But yeah, just getting the bids. And if you guys see that early on, you're like, hey, this is not going to pass the VA appraisal. We know this right now especially the peeling paint, just go and get a quote right away. So then that way you're not messing with it. We already know that it's kind of come in that way. So th that's another thing that helps close the deals faster, is just knowing like, hey, what are the common things that are wrong with the property? So then we know what to do. How often would you say you see those escrow holdbacks? How often is that strategy used? If the only, well, we use it, we know that if there's going to be issues or not, most of the buyer's agents will know. They'll be like, hey, this is going to be an issue. I don't see it that often, though. There's properties where I'm like, this is never going to pass. Like, this is going, this is, this is going to never going to pass. And it passes, but like it came in as is, no issues. Or something will pop up 
that will be like, hey, and it'll just be something really small. The only time I've had major, the, the biggest one was the example I gave you with a million three purchase. Was, but it was a super old building. So most people think that a, pre, that a property needs to be in like perfect condition. A property can be outdated. Like it could have shag rug. It could be from the 60s, right? Never touched. And it doesn't make a difference for the VA home loan. They're just looking for like the standard stuff. Uh, does it have a carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide detector? Does it have, the railings are not even a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. But peeling paint, cracked sidewalks used to be a thing, but they got rid of that. What they're trying to do is they're, they're really trying to stop hindering veterans from buying, right? So that's why they did that VA, a condo waiver. We've been asking for that for five years, and only this year were we able to do that, right? So, so even if you're on the listing side, you can offer to be like, yeah, we'll take VA home loan offers because we know we can get a waiver. Now, obviously, that's a discussion of understanding that, hey, what the waiver is, and then making sure that the buyers are okay with it so you're not put in a position where they're not going to go through with the transaction, right? So that's just having a lot of honest conversations. But again, we get put on the listing side to represent the buyers to be able to do those kind of things. So just because it's more opportunity, especially when things slow down, if they're going to slow down, right? We don't know what's going to happen with the market. They anticipate rates to go up, which they have to with inflation. There's no going about that, but we'll still be in a good spot for a long time, at least in my mind, just because interest rates before the pandemic were like four and a half, five percent. People were buying like crazy anyways. So and then people are, yeah, so it should be good. Awesome. Well, are there any other questions for David? Okay, we've got some great feedback from everyone. Great class, very enlightening. Love that feedback. Thank you. And I think we're going to go ahead and close out for the time being. And you have our contact information listed here. So if you have any questions for David, you can reach out to him directly. I also put his information in the chat. And you can also contact me directly if you have any questions on the title side. All right. Thanks, everyone. Oh, one oh, one thing I just wanted to mention for everybody, if you guys want to, I know this comes up all the time. If you guys do like virtual broker classes or anything with your with your offices we're happy to provide these classes obviously they don't they don't cost anything and the big thing with that is as well as uh as you see it's just really educational not trying to solicit people it's like how do we get as much information out to you guys so let's post it on that okay sounds great thank you so much david thanks guys have a good day Bye. bye